Hello everyone, this is Ableton Certified Trainer Paul Lasky, aka P. Lask, and I'm here with you today to talk about the brand new drum bus audio effect that came with Ableton Live 10. And uh, this is a pretty interesting effect. It's sort of a combination of a compressor and a saturator with a little bit of transient shaping as well. Um, but it's all sort of combined into one compact, fairly unique and very easy to use package. So um, let's take a look at the controls, kind of break it down. And, uh, and then in a, in a follow up video here, we will go through and look at some practical examples, but it helps if we know what it's doing first. So um, over here on the left hand side, we have the drive section or essentially distortion, um, as well as a compressor down here. So if we look at the, um, the first few controls here, we've got of course the drive control. And what this is going to do is increase the input gain of the signal coming into the drum bus. Now below that you have three different types of distortion curves that you can work with here, soft, medium, and hard. And these are fairly similar to Live's saturator if we look at some of these different curves. Um, it's gonna give you a similar effect, although not exactly the same. Um, but just kind of bear that in mind as we're going through this, uh, if it makes it a little bit easier to understand if you've used the saturator or if you've used a compressor before. So um, again, we've got the soft, medium, and hard curves here. And if your input signal is loud enough, you may not even need to increase the drive to hear the effect of these distortion transfer curves, but drive will increase the input gain. Trim below all of that is designed to decrease the input gain. So if something is coming in a little bit too hot and it's maybe getting too distorted, you can use the trim here to reduce the input volume. We'll leave that at zero for now. And then this compressor button is interesting because when you toggle that on, that's applying just a little bit of smart compression um, it's automatically set an attack and release time, a threshold, and, um, and even a ratio. So it kind of does it all in one click, which, you know, for better or worse, could be good or bad. Um, but I've, it's fairly interesting in terms of just getting loudness out of a sound, as we will see uh, fairly soon here. So, um, yeah, that's our, our leftmost column here where we have the drive, saturation controls, the input trim, and then the compressor. Now, things start to get interesting over here in these next two columns. Um, this middle column, which is referred to as the mid-high uh, frequency uh, processing section, um, what this allows us to do is actually add distortion specifically to the mid-high frequencies. And I believe the cutoff point here is 100 hertz. I think everything above 100 is what's being affected. So if we turn up the crunch, for example, that's going to apply distortion solely to the mid and high frequencies. It's going to leave out the low end. The damp control below that is kind of like a soft low pass filter. Um, what this is going to do is filter out certain high frequencies from this mid high distortion. So this is kind of like a post filter that's being applied just to the distortion that's occurring on the mid and high frequencies. If you need to tame that at all, you can turn the damp control down. Um, and then finally, this is a little bit separate here, but we have this transients control, which is kind of a built-in transient shaper. And again, this is gonna focus mostly on the mid and high frequencies. Now, if we turn it to the right, we are going to get an increase in the attack or in the transient levels of the, uh, of the incoming drum sounds or whatever sound it is that we're using this on. So it's gonna kind of boost up the attack phase or the transient of the sound. It's also gonna increase the sustain as well. So you're gonna get um, sort of an increase in the impact of the sound, but the sound's gonna seem louder for longer as well. If we turn it to the left, this is kind of interesting too because while it will boost the volume of the transient, the very beginning you can imagine of the drum sample, what it's also doing is actually decreasing the sustain level. So this could be interesting, for example, for adding a little bit more space between drum hits. Maybe you have a busy drum loop and you don't want all that kind of, um, maybe there's junk in between white noise or something like that between hits. You want to get rid of that. Turning the transients down to the left uh, is kind of an interesting way to take care of that. It, Sounds to me like it's applying almost a little bit of downward expansion, um, as well as some transient shaping on the on the actual transients, the attack phase of the of the sounds coming into the uh, into the drum bus. Um, but again, we'll look at that in a little bit. Um, and then finally, over here we have, which I think is personally this is my favorite part of it, is this boom control. I mean, already the name is pretty appealing. Um, but what it does is it adds a little bit of low frequency enhancement. So this column here is going to be focusing primarily on the lower frequencies. And um, what it's doing is it's applying a bit of resonant filtering just to the low end. So if we turn up the boom control, you can almost imagine turning up the resonance on a filter. 
and it's enhancing uh, a specific frequency, which we can set here with the frequency control. And the interesting thing about this is that you've got this kind of hard tune button down here. So as I move the frequency, you can see it gives me a pitch, A0, G sharp zero. And if I float around a specific pitch, uh, I can then click on that button and then it'll hard set the frequency to tune it exactly to that pitch. And this is great, for example, if you're trying to tune kick drums um, that are part of a drum loop, or even if you're just using this effect on its own on an individual kick drum, just to kind of tune the kick drum or bring out that frequency, that can be a really awesome way to do this. Now, one thing about the boom control, though, is it tends to add this low frequency enhancement, which can, can make the kick drums, for example, feel a little bit too long at times. So this is where this awesome decay control comes into play here. And if we start to turn this down, what's happening here is it's applying almost an amp envelope, like a volume envelope, that's uh, turning the sustain level and the decay time down of this boom, this, this low frequency enhancement that we're hearing. So it's kind of like we're, we're, we've got a resonant EQ, we're boosting the low end at a certain frequency, but that low end boost is acting dynamically. So if we turn the decay down, it's going to, we'll hear the boom, but it's going to reduce in volume much quicker the, the lower the decay level we have. So this is great, for example, for adding just a, a nice tight boom to the low end of, of a kick drum in maybe a you know fast moving loop, a drum and bass loop or something like that, or a four on the floor loop where the kick is very constant. This is a great way to add some space between each kick drum so that you're not really just overloading your low end with constant sub and no space. Um, but of course, if you want those long 808 style kick drums, um, decay at 100% is going to be the way to go there. Um, and over, over uh, also in this low frequency section, we've got this preview button here. And if that's toggled on, we will only hear the effect of the low frequency enhancement. Basically, what is the low frequency enhancement adding to the signal? And this is a great way to fine tune that if you want to just hear it on its own. In addition to that, being able to hear it with the preview button here, you've also got this bass meter, which is just showing us the level of the boom of the low frequency enhancement that's being added to the signal. So it's nice having this visual aid and this audio aid to kind of fine tune and, and get, in, get an idea for how much low end we're really adding to this, uh, to the overall signal with the drum bus. Um, and then of course over here, like uh, any good compressor or saturator, we've got a dry wet control if we want to do a little bit of a parallel blend between the processed and the unprocessed signal, um, always very helpful. And then finally we have, and you know, it's kind of an unsung hero, I think in distortion and compression devices is the output gain. Because as we probably all know, when we start to do heavy processing with things like compressors, distortion, etc., you start to add a lot of gain to a signal. And I think really the best way to apply any sort of processing like this is to gain match your input and your output and really hear what the effect is doing to the signal without being um, kind of deceived by the loudness or the gain that's being added to it. So the output gain is going to allow us to compensate for any added gain. Or maybe if the input signal after processing is a little too quiet, we can boost it back up if need be. Um, so we have, again, the output gain here as the final stage of the process. So just a quick recap here. Um, the signal is first going to pass through the drive control, which is just sort of a broadband distortion for the whole signal. We can choose different transfer curves, and we can increase the drive amount if the input signal is too quiet, and we want to get more distortion, more harmonics out of the sound. Input trim is helpful if the input signal is too loud, and we need to reduce the volume a bit. The compression switch is just going to toggle on a smart compressor, which is going to automatically set uh, attack time release time, threshold, and ratio to just kind of make the whole signal a bit louder. Um, then we have the crunch control. Um, and like I said, this middle section is focusing on the mid and high frequencies. This is going to add distortion specifically to the mids and highs. Damp control is going to act as a low pass filter to filter out certain harsh high frequencies that are coming from that distortion. And then we've got the transient shaper control down here. Uh, and then finally, this right-hand column, we've got our boom control, which is adding the low-end enhancement from a resonant filter, um, which we can control the frequency of, the amount of, and finally, the decay time of. And then we've got the dry-wet control, and we also have our output slider here for adjusting output gain and uh, doing that most important part of any sort of dynamics processing is gain staging and just making sure things sound roughly even. So um, that does it for our overview of Drum Bus. 
And let's take a look now at some practical examples, practical uses of this, uh, putting it into play here. So I'll catch you in the next video. Take care. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.